a game in which you can shoot an enemy uh, and it doesn't die isn't a particularly exciting game. So today let's talk about setting up an HP value for enemies and ourselves as a matter of fact and also dealing with damage to that HP value. It's actually remarkably simple. Unreal has an entire built-in system for damage because pretty much any game you're going to be making is going to have some sort of damaging or HP value uh, system. So let's dive right into the code. And for that, we're going to go into our uh, base magic character because both the enemy and the player will need to have this information. Uh, we're going to go back into our board here. And when we overlap with something, what we're going to do is we spawn that uh, Niagara system and we run the board hit function, which doesn't do anything for the time being. We need to make sure that we have the gameplay statics uh, included here because uh, apply damage is a gameplay static function. So we'll include that. And as you probably should know by now, that's in Kismet gameplay statics. And from there, we can use U gameplay statics and we can say apply damage. Uh, there's a couple different ones here actually that I probably should highlight. There's point damage, radial damage, uh, just normal damage, radial damage with fall off. For right now, we're just going to go for apply damage, uh, but these are different types of damage causing. So we can say uh, point damage hurts the specified actor with the specified impact. Uh, what's more important here is things like radial damage or radial damage with fall. These are things you can use for AoE attacks. So if you have a grenade, instead of spawning in like a whole collision box when it explodes to calculate who is inside this collision box and all that nonsense, you can just apply radial damage and you can give in a radius or a radius with a fall off. And the damage will be calculated for everything within that radius and with if you use with fall off, it will also, um, the closer you are to it, the more damage it will do. So that's actually very, very useful, very, very handy to have. Today, we're just going to use the normal applied damage uh, because that's all that we really need. And that's the first parameter there is a damage actor, which is going to be the other actor, which we are overlapping with. Then we need to put in a float for the base damage. Uh, for that, we're just going to make a U property float base damage. So every type of bullet we create can have a different amount of damage it can do. Then next, we need to put in a controller for who the instigator is. And But let's make a, a separate variable for that up here first, actually, to make it a little bit less messy. So a controller um player c for player controller i guess will be equal to get instigator and that will get us the pawn that instigated this thing uh but of course we need a controller so we'll get controller out of that and you'll easily see after we make this into a pointer this line of code now makes sense and we can simply just use that variable in here instead of having that entire line in there because that's just very messy. The damage causer will just be this, which is this bullet. And then finally, we need to put in the damage type. So let's just make for shits and giggles uh, a U property for the damage type. Just put it in there in case we want to use it at a later point. So that will be a U damage type. Um, but actually, I think we need to make that a T subclass of U damage type. Because the way you make new damage types is making a class that is a child of the damage type class. And that way you can also put code into it, I believe. I haven't really done too much with this uh, myself, but it's fun to just play around with a little bit. So let's call this just damage type. And then when we put that in there, uh, I think this should now be a valid function. And now this will use the gameplay statics apply damage to get the other actor and apply a base damage amount, which is a variable that we made, uh, amount of damage to that actor. Uh, and it will uh, pass through the controller that we have found as the instigator, the damaging actor. So the bullet that actually dealt the damage as this very object with whatever damage type this bullet has on it. So with that, 
and then on our base magic character we will just uh, copying this from the unreal documentation uh use the take damage uh function here and that will be an override function because we are overriding a pre-existing function that exists on any actor really and that takes in a uh, float for the damage amount it takes in a damage event it takes in a controller for the instigator and a actor for the damage causer and we'll just implement this right here this returns a float which will honestly uh, not be that important i think but we'll just return our damage amount here and in here we can just put in any code that we want and what we're going to be doing with uh, taking damage is we make an hp value which i already did for you because it's really that easy uh, a u property just called hp it's going to be a float and it will be hp minus equals the damage amount it's as easy as that and then uh, in there we'll also include if the HP is less than or equal to zero, we will also destroy that actor. And now when we apply damage, uh, we will just make this run its take damage function. Now that we have this take damage uh, set up, we can compile this whole thing, which I've moved that to my other screen because it kept overlaying with things and it just looked very ugly, honestly. We can see if we shoot this twice, he dies because our damage, I think uh, we're doing 30 damage or something. I think I hard coded that in uh, just for testing purposes. Probably shouldn't do that. Yeah, that definitely should just be our variable. Uh, but our damaging works. So we damage things and when they have less than zero HP, they just get destroyed. And you can add whatever code you want to that. You have a reference to the instigator, which is your player controller. So if your player controller has something like a score value, on it you can just cast that controller to your player controller and add your score value to that player controller it's really as easy as that and now you will note since we're doing 20 damage again uh it will take three hits for this dude to die uh apparently more than three hits i don't know why that didn't hit him it probably actually hit his weapon and that didn't count because we're hitting a different actor that's a thing that you should be aware of if you have multiple different actors very close together and the child actor component is a different actor it is a component but it's also a different actor it can very much be the case that like your weapon will block an attack and that will prevent damage from being dealt which can be annoying or it can be a game feature right it's not a bug it's a feature and that's the basics of the unreal damage system again you could just make something that whenever the bullet collides with it it casts to our base magic character and just directly subtracts things from the hp or runs a function on that that subtracts from the hp but unreal has a really robust build-in damage system as you've been able to see it's a little bit more bothersome to use than that way but it's also a lot more flexible and in most types of games that you're going to be making you don't want to rebuild this entire stuff yourself right that's the reason we're using unreal for the most part is it has a lot of pre-build very robust very powerful tools so do learn to use them it is also worth noting uh by the way that if you have your health or whatever you want to have that code on a component rather than on the actor itself there is a good way of doing that with this on take any damage delegate as well in this video we've only uh, done directly on the actor and you can just run the take damage function and that is the easiest way to do it if for whatever reason uh like me you have a component here in my own game which holds all of the values for hp and that kind of stuff uh what i do here real quick is on begin play on that stat component i get the owner which is just the actor that this component is on and then on take any damage i bind uh with add dynamic again this object so this component and then the take damage function for that and that has a slightly different signature if we're using this method so what we're doing there is we want to have uh the damaged actor a float for the damage the u damage type which has to be a const then the controller which is the instigator and then the damage dealer as a damage causer so it's slightly different and this doesn't have to be called take damage either this can be called whatever because we're not overriding any functions we're not adding any functionality to 
parent classes or anything. This is just a function that we bind to uh, untake any damage. So that is how I personally do it in my game. It's a little bit more of a roundabout way of doing it, but it is also a way that you can do it. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my Cave Digger tier Patreons, Sergey Thomas, 